online and from around the world. The cat's out of the bag. They can't unlearn about CCSVI now. I've managed to get an appointment in St. Vincent's Hospital with a vascular surgeon. Patients with MS are pushing their medical systems to look at this provocative new diagnosis. Both of my jugular veins are narrowed. It's called CCSVI, vein abnormalities that seem to be found in those with MS. A new theory that was actually first proposed over a century ago. Here in the town of Dornbirn, Austria, Retired Dr. Franz Schelling is watching the eruption of interest. Convinced this long-dismissed idea will finally get its day in scientific court. I started hoping again. As a young doctor, he had treated patients with MS and was not convinced it was just a disease of the immune system. So he visited libraries across Europe, finding a curious thread. Over and over, scientists had reported signs of brain damage that appeared linked to abnormal blood flow. The more I collected, the more I was convinced it, it had to be a venous flow inversion. But even after studying models of human veins from autopsies, he couldn't figure out why blood might be flowing backwards into the brains of those with MS. That needed more research. How many agencies did you approach in how many countries to say, hey, I found something here, let's take a look at it? <laughs> I can't remember anymore. I just remember I went to Vienna, to Zurich, to Brussels, uh, to Philadelphia, to New York, to London. And uh, Your message was? Check the veins in a mess. That was 30 years ago and MS specialists sent him letters of rejection, writing that MS was an immune disorder, nothing to do with the veins. Bottom line, you were not allowed to do this research. They well, said it no. was It was impossible. It really <laughs> cracked me down <laughs> to, because I had patients that had, uh, patients died of MS when I went back to surgery, after I realized that there was no interest in clearing up this issue. That is until 2002, when Dr. Schelling's son decided to collect his father's scientific work and publish it on the internet, giving his theory a new worldwide audience, including one vascular surgeon in Ferrara, Italy. Dr. Paolo Zamboni had also been analyzing the link between MS and blood flow. In pops an email from Dr. Schelling. Yes, and I asked him, but why you are writing me? And uh, he wrote, simply because I found by Google, so I wrote to you immediately. <laughs> it's, 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 it's amazing. The internet connected Dr. Zamboni's own new findings of narrowed veins in many patients with MS with Dr. Schelling's years of background research. In fact, the online world is becoming a game changer for MS, connecting not only scientists, but also desperately unhappy patients who are now demanding doctors investigate this theory quickly. All of us MSers have been very pivotal in uh, getting the word out and making people look into this. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I've been saying that for ages. I will be going to see a vascular surgeon. And the drive to learn more has drawn scientists to the San Giorgio Hospital in Ferrara, Italy. Breath in and out. Where Dr. Zamboni and his team are teaching researchers how to test for vein abnormalities using ultrasound as these scientists prepare to launch studies of their own. Go back to the jugular. The right internal jugular vein is blocked. The interest is really exploding and we are moving uh, really faster uh, because uh, I have continuously contact with colleagues from all over the world. In this first international training program are neurologists, radiologists and surgeons, including Canadian vascular doctor Sandy McDonald. I'd love to be involved in the study because I, I think it is going to be challenging, but I think it'll give the answer to the question over a very short period of time. A very important and one of the important draws, the intriguing idea that balloon angioplasty might lessen the symptoms of a disease that's now treated only with expensive medications, according to BC radiologist Lindsay McCann. 
And if you think of the societal cost of MS, people's young people, um, think of what we can accomplish with a relatively simple procedure. And so we don't want to let this languish and go on for a long period of time. We really want to get to the bottom of this. Good afternoon, MS Society Bosch. Scientists are now searching for research dollars from donations or through scientific grants and from MS societies. But Ottawa neurologist Mark Friedman, who spent much of his career testing other promising treatments, worries that agencies like the MS Society are diverting funds away from other hopeful leads. It's being forced, I think, to head down that road because uh, patients are feeling, and the patients are the main drivers of the, of the funds, obviously, supporting the society's work on this. Uh, basically, they're looking at this as saying, stop everything else. Redirect your funding to this project because it's worthy of it. Um, and I don't know that that's necessarily the truth over many other kinds of projects that are out there that, that may indeed have more scientific rationale to move forward. Still, Dr. Friedman says his team has submitted a bid to study the theory. Huh? But studies could take years. Christopher Alkenbrack has already found out he has problems with his neck veins and he's in a hurry to get them opened. All they want to do is prove or disprove this new theory. Well, I can't wait. I could have a, a major attack during those two years while I'm waiting for something to come to Canada. So the native of Wolfville, Nova Scotia, is funding his study of one, spending over $10,000 from his retirement fund to get the experimental treatment at a private clinic in Poland. Absolutely, because my next attack could leave me in a wheelchair for life. The reason why I'm, I'm so insistent on this procedure is because I have secondary progressive MS and nothing, none of the, the medicines that I've used over the years, the injectable medicines, have really worked to stop my MS. It's still progressed nevertheless. Many MS patients are now traveling to new clinics, opening up in Eastern Europe and India, that are charging thousands of dollars for testing and treatment. I understand that they are desperate and uh, they can be attracted by this. I do not recommend this because I do not know the quality and uh, probably this can be dangerous for the patients. He insists the best way of moving forward and protecting patients is by convincing established medical communities with hard scientific data and with more studies that test and treat patients. My position is to stand and to respond with science and to tell to patient to give patient because uh, we are really running very, very fast. And from his post in Austria, Und haben Sie jetzt retired Dr. Franz Schelling is trying to help patients navigate all of the uncertainty via the Internet, the very tool that has helped push this old theory into the 21st century. I think the development uh, can't be stopped anymore. I hope it will find the proper path. He insists this new avenue may prove far more complex than just opening up blocked plumbing, but he's celebrating the worldwide investigations. What Zamboni has found and what other is, people are looking at is very, just the beginning. Yes, of course, but a very, very great beginning, a grand development. Neurologists from around the world will be meeting in Toronto this week in attendance. Dr. Zamboni answering questions about the liberation treatment. And on the agenda, the results of a major study into CCSVI conducted in Buffalo. If you want to learn more about our story, go to w5.ctv.ca. There you'll find additional information and extra interviews you can watch online.